If you're like me, you may catch yourself thinking about your beloved pet's final days and having a slight breakdown about it. We all wish they could live as long as us, but unfortunately that simply isn't possible, so it is crucial that we give them the boundless attention they deserve and take excellent care of them for the short time they spend here on Earth. If you're like me, hearing about pets being mistreated, well, it pisses you off. How could anyone treat an innocent creature that trusts you with all of its soul in a cruel manner? Today, I was looking at some articles about Jesse Cause, an influencer who passed away in a tragic car accident while taking his golden retriever on their dream trip across the United States when I stumbled on a story that very quickly took me from sad to furious. The story I am about to tell you occurred in the summer of 2021, and just a quick warning, it deals with the death of animals, so if you aren't in a position to tear up a little or become extremely furious, I recommend you watch this video at a later time. This story goes through so many twists and turns and has an extremely disheartening ending, so I just had to make a video on it to hopefully get it the attention it deserves. This is the story of Penny and Cookie, two healthy Great Danes that mysteriously die while being shipped to their new home across the country. Bill and Kristen Irvin were residents of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, until Bill got an offer he couldn't refuse in Napa, California. Moving is a pain, and with all of your other belongings, it can be hard to find the space and energy to haul your pets along for the ride as well. To make moving easier and ensure his pet's safety, Bill arranged to have his three pets, two dogs and a cat, Nelly, shipped to him by a pet moving service called VIP Pet Delivery, which was based in Kansas. It is a scary thought to take your animals across the country, so it is a great idea to leave it up to professionals who can give them the careful attention required throughout the journey. Plus, the family in charge, the Cottrells, seemed extremely friendly and assured the Irvins that a relative would be driving his pets to him. Bill went ahead and scheduled the delivery and then took his pets to the vet to make sure they were all healthy enough to travel across the country, as that can be very stressful and potentially dangerous for animals that don't travel often. Every pet passed the inspection with flying colors and were cleared for departure. As the day approached, however, things took a turn when the Cottrell family was exposed to COVID and therefore couldn't take the trip themselves. No worries though, they assured Bill. They were going to get their best driver on the case instead. An experienced driver named Sean Harris would now be the man in charge of taking Penny and Cookie to California alone, but he is more than capable of handling this type of job. No big deal, Mr. Irvin likely thought, as this man had been responsible for many of these deliveries in the past. So, moving day arrived, and after the dogs and cat were secured by Sean and his Ford Transit and their locations were exchanged on their phones, the 2,368-mile drive commenced. As I said before, keeping an animal locked up in a moving vehicle for long periods of time can be extremely stressful for it. Part of a job like this is to have someone keep an eye on the pets at all times and stop the van every couple of hours so they can walk around, eat and drink, and use the bathroom. This is what is supposed to happen, and this is the practice Mr. and Mrs. Irvin signed off on when they decided to trust the lives of their animals with a shipping company. What they didn't sign up for, however, was a detour to Texas with their precious cargo. The Irvins were completely in the dark about the whereabouts of Sean. He had turned off his tracker not even a day after the trip commenced, but the family was instructed by the shipping company not to try to contact the driver directly. I assume this is because, well, he's driving and therefore should not be texting, but whatever the reasoning may be, the family was instructed to contact VIP Pet Delivery with questions and concerns, and they will relay the information back to them. 
the owner of the company, Rachel, who they had set up these plans initially with, texted them and let them know that their pets were happy and healthy in Texas and would be with them in a matter of days. The Irvin's response? Why are they in Texas? Rachel was silent for the rest of the day. Immediately, this begged some questions. What the hell was Sean doing taking a massive detour to Texas on a long and timed delivery? Why didn't anyone tell the owners about this change in route? Why didn't Rachel reply to the Irvins? My guess is that she was also in the dark and simply panicking a bit for reasons we will get into later, but one can't say for certain what her motivation was at that time. Maybe she just didn't want to tell them the true reasoning. The next day, Rachel finally texted Bill and Kristen back with good news. The driver was headed through Phoenix and into Napa. As far as I know, she didn't give them a reason for the detour, but at least they got some assurance that the delivery was still going smoothly. That same day, though, they got a call from the driver. Remember how I said they weren't supposed to contact each other? So immediately, this would have probably caused their hearts to drop. On the phone was a man that wasn't Sean, but his father, and what he said from Bill's recollection would change their lives forever. I hate to tell you this, but I need to tell you that your dogs are dead. And by the way, they smelled really bad, so we had them cremated. This was definitely not the news they were expecting to hear, especially so bluntly from a man they had never even spoken to before. Initially assuming they had been forgotten in the hot van, Bill inquired as to how their two perfectly healthy dogs suddenly died. What Sean's father said next was a real dagger as he was clearly trying to shift the blame off of him. Well, you know, they were old and they probably felt like you abandoned them. So that's probably how they died. So what the hell happened here? How did these two healthy Great Danes die being transported by this company's best driver? Why did the driver stop in Texas for a night what is VIP Pet Delivery going to do about letting two beloved pets die under their supervision? I was rife with questions about the incident, and luckily, I found some answers. And boy, is this a rabbit hole and a half that led to an ending I could have never guessed. Let's start with this. Sean Harris was not Sean Harris, who the Irvins were told was Sean Harris by both VIP Pet Delivery and the man himself was actually Jack Nakamoto Jr. Jack Nakamoto Jr. was not one of the company's best drivers. In fact, Jack had only completed one prior delivery with them and he was being leased out by another company called Ship Pets Online. Sean Harris was a real driver, though, who had called off from the delivery at the last minute, and instead of letting the family know about this, Rachel just told Jack to tell him his name was Sean to avoid confusion. For anyone curious, lying to your clients is not a good business practice, especially when it is as shady as this. Jack obliged and told the Irvins that he was Sean to keep the ruse going. This wasn't the only lie the Irvins were told throughout the trip, though. According to Nakamoto Sr., Jack's dad, Jack had noticed that the dogs were not acting right early on in the venture. Dude, she won't get up. She can't walk no more. But was told by the Cottrells at VIP Pet Delivery that everything was fine and to continue transporting the cargo. It is unclear if they were aware of the extent the dogs were hurting, but they most likely did as Jack had taken videos and pictures of Cookie laying in the grass unable to move. According to Nakamoto Sr., Rachel said the Irvins had stated that Cookie does that, and he should just continue driving. To be fair, Cookie did suffer from hip dysplasia, so this type of behavior was not unheard of from her. The Irvins later commented and showed texts that Rachel had indeed told them about Cookie, but did not send them the video that she had received from Jack. She assured the Irvins that everything was fine later, but in reality, Jack was reportedly freaking out to his dad because of his fears about the dog's condition. Then, only the Nakamoto's knew what happened next. The dogs both died. Why did both Penny and Cookie suddenly die almost simultaneously? Something fishy was going on here. 
Cookie was the one acting amiss according to the initial claims in the video from Jack. So even if she was sicker and passed, why did Penny go with her? Unfortunately, as Nakamoto Sr. told the Irvins, the body was cremated, so an autopsy could not be performed. Or was it? The employees at the crematorium that Penny and Cookie were taken to were also suspicious of the story they were told, so they held on to the bodies rather than burning them. When they got the call from the Irvins, they decided to do that autopsy on the dogs. In both of the dogs' bodies was the sedative xylazine, and in one, the vet found traces of ketamine, which is a horse tranquilizer. They most likely overdosed from these drugs as a final push to the grave. Bill came to the conclusion that this was done intentionally in order to speed up the trip that he notes was extremely quick, making it from Michigan to Texas to California in under three days. He does not believe that this left adequate break time for the dogs and they were drugged to keep them compliant and asleep during the ride. The cat, Nellie, survived though and made it to Napa where she still resides According to Mr. Irvin, VIP Pet Delivery denied any wrongdoing in the incident and did not even refund their $1,300 deposit to the family. The authorities contacted by the Irvins responded that there was nothing they could really do as they didn't believe any crime had been committed. Jack Nakamoto Jr. was never even questioned to this day despite multiple animal cruelty violations and negligence leading to the death of two beloved family pets. Mr. Irvin's last note was this. Bottom line, animals are property and have no rights. We are trying to move on with our lives, but never receiving even one apology still bothers us immensely. Thanks for caring. I reached out to Jack Nakamoto Sr. for comment as he is the only one I could find of the two, but he did not reply to my email. Oh, and by the way, he's a dog breeder now. To sum things up, I think that this entire situation is beyond wrong and definitely calls for legal action to be taken against Jack Nakamoto Jr. or, at the very least, VIP Pet Delivery. To be frank, we don't know what transpired behind the scenes between Mr. Nakamoto and VIP Pet Delivery. For all we know, he just as likely could have gone rogue and used the ketamine at his own discretion as VIP Pet Delivery could have supplied it to him to make the trip more efficient. We do not know if VIP Pet Delivery was aware of a detour to Texas beforehand or if it was a secret only supposed to be known by the driver. There are a lot of loose ends here, but to say that no crime has been committed really affirms what Mr. Irvin said, that apparently pets are just property despite them having feelings and attachments towards their owners that we naturally develop back. The sentimental value of a dog is almost priceless but to not even refund a $1,300 deposit to ensure the safety of your pet's transport is beyond greedy. Even if they were portrayed as property, I would assume the liability of a shipping company losing or damaging cargo would at least be on them to an extent. I am making this video because I find it extremely wrong that nobody is willing to take accountability for the wrongs that were done to the Irvins and their dogs, and I am shocked that more people are not aware of this incident. It would be wonderful if anyone would take this seriously and do a proper investigation into the crimes committed by both VIP Pet Delivery and the Nakamotos that resulted in the death of two family friends that would never make it to their new home. I want to share this story with as many people as I can in hopes that someone will be able to do something about it to bring the Irvins closure. I know I was absolutely outraged when I found out the dogs were drugged. Accidents happen, sure but there is nothing accidental about drugging two dogs as supposed professionals who do this for a living to make it more convenient on themselves. I was desperately hoping that this story would end with Penny and Cookie being sold to someone else and tracked down to be reunited with the Irvins. Unfortunately for everyone, though, the only time the truth was told was in regards to the death of the dogs. The carelessness of all the parties involved baffles and infuriates me. I will be sharing this with everybody who played a part in the delivery from Rachel, the owner, to the sheriff's department who dismissed this case so coldly without even giving it a thought. I do wish that the Irvins would have pressed charges, but it is completely understandable why they wouldn't as it felt like absolutely everyone was against them. Well, I stand with them, 
and against the dog-drugging sickos who currently run a breeding business as if nothing ever happened. I stand against the Cottrells who lied to the Irvins by telling them that they themselves would be transporting the dogs while actually ditching the scheduled delivery and claiming it was because they got exposed to COVID while actually attending a festival instead. So many lies were told throughout this adventure, and so much blame is being shifted onto others, when it is pretty clear that both parties involved in the delivery are at fault. I urge you to share this video with a dog lover that you know, and hopefully, it will get this story noticed enough to be looked into for real this time. Thank you so much for watching, and as a final note, I want to ask you to not try to take justice into your own hands by harassing any of the people I have mentioned throughout this video. I will make sure they see this, and I hope they will know themselves that what they did was wrong, but I am strongly against mass amounts of people bullying them with no intention to make a positive change. All we can do is share this story with people who have the power to do something about this, and hope the Nakamotos and Cottrells can find it in their hearts to finally make things right. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you next time.